15 minute or less lecture series, Human Anatomy, Chapter 22, The Endocrine System. The endocrine system is basically a collection of glands, organs, cells, etc. that all do one thing. They all produce hormones. And these hormones often coordinate many important body activities. And there are also additional hormone producing cells and structures in other organs considered parts of other systems. Uh, glands, as we know, come in two types. Exocrine glands that have a duct and secrete things on a surface and endocrine glands. And endocrine glands will secrete their hormones either into the surrounding fluids or into the bloodstream. Uh, endocrine glands can be controlled by the composition of materials in the bloodstream. For instance, low calcium levels might cause some structures to produce hormones. Uh, they can be controlled by direct neural stimulus, an uh, impulse from the brain causing it to secrete hormones, or they can be controlled by other hormones produced by other structures. Uh, function of hormones. Regulation is the big thing. Regulating the composition, volume, etc. of the internal environment, especially blood, since many fluids come from blood. Uh, controlling overall metabolism and energy balance. Uh, controlling contraction of smooth or muscles or cardiac fibers. Other gland secretions, immune system activities. Uh, can control growth and development of the entire organism. Um, help in the operation of reproductive systems and even help establish circadian rhythms, the uh, wake sleep cycle. Uh, the hypothalamus is considered the master controller of the endocrine system and it produces hormones that either are stored by or are used to control the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is attached to the hypothalamus by the infundibulum and there's an anterior pituitary gland and a posterior pituitary gland, two separate structures that share the same space. Uh, the hypothalamus controls the anterior pituitary gland by secreting hormones into the bloodstream. These hormones then travel down uh, through the hypophysial portal vein to a second capillary bed. So this is a portal system where two capillary beds are connected by a vein. Uh, the, anterior, the hypothalamus either releases hormones that stimulate secretion of a particular hormone by the uh, anterior pituitary gland or a hormone that inhibits or suppresses the secretion of a specific hormone by the anterior pituitary gland. And hormones that control other glands that secrete hormones is called tropic hormones. The uh, anterior pituitary gland can produce seven hormones. This includes the human growth hormone, stimulates overall synthesis and secretion of growth factors, it stimulates the liver, muscles, bones to divide and grow and function. Basically, this is what helps us grow to whatever height we end up being. Uh, thyroid stimulating hormone that stimulates the thyroid gland to secrete hormones. So for instance, hypothalamus releases the uh, thyroid stimulating hormone releasing hormone. This will go to the anterior pituitary gland causing it to produce the thyroid stimulating hormone. This thing goes to the thyroid gland through the bloodstream causing the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones. And then when sufficient hormones, thyroid hormones are detected in the bloodstream, the hypothalamus will switch to releasing uh, TSH inhibiting hormones, and this will then stop the pituitary gland to then no longer stimulate the thyroid gland. Uh, next up are two hormones, the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormones. Both of these hormones are involved in the uh, function of the reproductive system. In the ovaries, it helps to uh, initiate the development of oocytes and secretion of estrogens and the production of uh, progesterone and ovulation and so forth, and in testes, it stimulates sperm production and testosterone release. Uh, we'll go into these hormones in more detail in the reproductive system. Uh, prolactin promotes milk production in the mammary glands. Uh, Adrenocorticotropic hormones stimulate secretion of a category of hormones called glucocorticoids from the adrenal cortex, which is another important structure of the endocrine system. The melanocyte stimulating hormone stimulates the melanocytes, the pigment cells in the skin to help darken, can be useful if you need to tan or something like that. And it's not maybe to also influence other brain activity. Uh, if someone has pituitary dwarfism, that means they secrete low levels of human growth hormone and do not achieve the height that is expected of them. And giantism is a hypersecretion, oversecretion of human growth hormone, and they end up becoming much, much taller than expected. The posterior pituitary gland produce, uh, stores two hormones produced by the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus deposits those hormones directly into the pituitary gland by specialized cells related to neurons. Uh, one is the oxytocin. Uh, we know oxytocin stimulates the contractions in the uterus, especially during childbirth, to help you know 
during labor, and also stimulates milk ejection, not production, ejection, especially when the infant is suckling on the mammillary glands. It's also been found that oxytocin helps people develop a sense of love or trust with two other people, and that this hormone is also produced in men, so this isn't just a uh, hormone produced in females. Uh, and then there's antidiuretic hormone. It is used to help conserve body water, so it decreases urine volume, decreases perspiration, leads to the constriction of blood vessels because if we're conserving water, that means our blood volume level has gone down, and that means blood pressure has gone down, and constricting our blood vessels will help to raise blood pressure. Uh, here is the pineal gland. This pineal gland is part of the epithalamus and is not controlled by the anterior pituitary gland. Uh, the pineal gland instead is regulated by whether or not we're getting light input through our eyes. So if it is bright and light is being exposed to our retina, then the pineal gland is suppressed. And when it's dark, the pineal gland will secrete melatonin. Melatonin then will stimulate the various processes needed to cause us to become sleepy. Uh, the thymus, also an independent of uh, the anterior pituitary gland, is found in the thoracic cavity, somewhat superior to the heart. It secretes various hormones, thymocin, thymocolitin, thymic hormonal factor, etc., that help to promote the proliferation and maturation of T cells, which are important for our immune response, our specific immune response. Uh, the thyroid gland is located in the neck, just below the thyroid cartilage. Uh, it produces thyroid hormones. These thyroid hormones help to increase basal metabolic rate. So basically how much thyroid hormones you produce sets your overall metabolic rate. Uh, it stimulates protein production, increases use of glucose, accelerates body growth, um, very important functions. And thyroid hormones are released when the anterior pituitary gland says so. Uh, the thyroid gland also secretes the hormone calcitonin. Calcitonin is released uh, when uh, Calcium levels in the bloodstream get too high, so it'll lower the blood levels of calcium and phosphate. It does this by inhibiting osteoclasts that break down bone tissue to release calcium, and it stimulates osteoblasts, which build up bone tissue and take in calcium from the bloodstream. So that'll lower the calcium levels. Uh, parathyroid hormone is found on the uh, posterior side of the uh, thyroid gland. It is also independent of the anterior pituitary gland. It is monitoring blood levels. This time, when calcium levels get too low in the bloodstream, it will be released to increase blood calcium levels. Um, so in this case, it stimulates osteoclast activity, break down the bone tissue, release some more calcium into the bloodstream, and it stimulates phosphate excretion by the kidneys so that the excess phosphate is released in the urine. Uh, the adrenal glands lying directly superior to the kidneys. Uh, there are actually two separate glands in this space, the adrenal cortex, which is one gland, and the adrenal medulla, a separate one. Adrenal cortex releases a lot of different kinds of hormones. We're going to break them down into three main categories. There are the mineral corticoids. These basically are affecting levels of electrolytes in the bloodstream, so they can be released to increase blood levels of sodium and thereby increase overall blood volume, more water in the bloodstream. And they also can be released to decrease blood levels of potassium usually by secreting in the urine. Uh, there are the glucocorticoids. This group of enzymes stimulate glucose production from uh, non-carbohydrate sources. So they stimulate glucose being produced from amino acids. They increase protein breakdown, which gives you more amino acids to use. Uh, they also uh, can decrease inflammation and decrease the immune response. Glucocorticoids are at least partially controlled by the anterior pituitary gland. And then there's androgens. Androgens are um, Reproductive like hormones, they are uh, able to assist in early growth of axillary pubic hair um, when a person starts to enter puberty. In females, they also contribute to the libido and are the main source of postmenopause estrogens in the body. All right, there's the adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla produces uh, adrenaline, which comes in two forms, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Uh, these are controlled by the Hypothalamus sending a nerve impulse, so it's a direct nerve impulse to cause these hormones to be released. Adrenaline then stimulates the fight or flight response, causing all kinds of activities throughout the body, either stimulating or suppressing things. So it'll increase heart rate, increase blood flow to skeletal muscles, increase overall glucose levels in the bloodstream, suppress the uh, gastrointestinal tract, and, and so on. Pancreas. The pancreas is an abdominal cavity, uh, somewhat posterior to the stomach. Um, stretching from the duodenum of the small intestine to the spleen. 
Um, within the pancreas, you have both extracrine functions and endocrine functions. The endocrine functions occur in the pancreatic islets, and they're responding to the glucose levels in blood. So they don't need the anterior pituitary gland to work. Uh, there are four main cells that produce four main hormones. There's the alpha cells that secrete glu uh, glucagon, beta cells that secrete insulin, delta cells that secrete somatostatin, and F cells that secrete pancreatic polypeptides. Uh, basically, the way it works, glucagon will raise blood glucose levels. So if you have low levels of glucose in the bloodstream, it will raise these glucose levels by accelerating the breakdown of glu uh, glycogen, which is how we store glucose in the liver and some muscles, and also increase glucose release into the blood. Makes sense. Insulin, on the other hand, is released when the glucose levels in the blood are really high. So insulin will lower glucose blood levels by increasing glucose transport into cells, into adipose cells, into muscle cells, into liver cells, and also increases the production of glycogen, which is how you can store that glucose. Uh, somatostatin inhibits secretion of insulin and glucagon. Uh, pancreatic polypeptides inhibit somatostatin. So if blood levels of glucose are normal, then we have somatostatin being released, and this will inhibit the release of glucagon and insulin, and there'll be no poly, uh, pancreatic polypeptides being released. If you have high levels of glucose in the blood, then somatostatin will be suppressed by pancreatic polypeptides, and insulin will be produced. And if the glucose levels in the blood are low, somatostatin will again be suppressed by pancreatic polypeptides, and glucagon will be secreted. Uh, diabetes, diabetes mellitus, is caused by either an ability to use or produce insulin. Type 1 diabetes, the person's immune system destroyed the beta cell, so they do not produce insulin. Type 2 diabetes, which is a bit more common, um, target cells that will normally uptake glucose, so they become less sensitive to insulin, so you have to produce more and more insulin in order to get the glucose to be taken up by these cells, and eventually your pancreas just cannot produce enough insulin. Uh, reproductive systems, the ovary releases estrogens and progesterones to regulate the female reproductive cycle um, and oogenesis. Uh, relaxin to increase flexibility of pubic synthesis during pregnancy and helps to dilate the uterine cervix during labor and delivery, inhibit, inhibits the secretion of follicle stimulating hormone. Uh, in, in the testes and males, it produces testosterone, which stimulates the descent of testes in the fetus, regulates sperm production, promotes male secondary characteristics, and inhibits that again inhibits secretion of follicle stimulating hormones. Uh, there are other endocrine cells out there. The heart actually stimulate, produces hormones that will stimulate the kidneys to produce more urine. Producing more urine, lower the overall blood volume, which will decrease blood pressure. The GI tract has all kinds of hormones that are released to affect and regulate the digestion. Uh, placenta produces hormones to help prevent the uterus from um, getting rid of the developing embryo. And the kidneys release renin, the hormone renin, which regulates blood pressure, and erythropoietin, which stimulates erythrocyte red blood cell production. Also, when we're exposed to UV rays, the skin uh, helps to produce a steroid hormone precursor called vitamin D. Vitamin D then ends up being stored in the kidneys, and functional vitamin D gets released when we need to increase calcium levels in the bloodstream to increase the absorption of calcium by the small intestine. Uh, Feel free to like or subscribe below.